Uh, today I'm working on a tune and it has to do with uh, some idle adjustments that I'm making. And I'm going to be talking about, let's get right into it here, some closed loop idle settings. Closed loop is where you say, hey, this is the RPM that I want it to run at. And then it does what it's got to do with the ISC valve to get it to do that. All right, so we'll start off first to get into that. You go to your startup and idle and your idle control settings, right? So there we go. We got closed loop. So we know that that's good. Um, these are typical settings for all of the uh, Ford stuff. So we're going to leave that alone because we're working on a Fox body. Uh, then we go back up to startup idle. And the next thing we're going to look at is our closed loop idle settings. So these settings are important, but will only show up if you have closed loop idle selected. Uh, the next thing we're going to pop up here is our closed loop idle target RPM. And I'll show you a little trick on this. There's a little radius box right up here in the top right. If you click that, it's going to pop up this little box down here. It makes it a lot easier for adjusting this. That's how I like to do it. Let me expand this for you guys so you can see it. Then I'll also expand this so you guys can see it. So this is going to get pretty technical, and I'm sorry if this is dry for some of you guys. But uh, it is what it is. So a PID gives you a proportional a proportional gain, an integral gain, and a derivative gain. Um, the easy way to think about this on your proportional gain is, so this says it's for closed loop idle, PID loop, it reacts immediately to change in RPM. The integral gain says it reacts to sustained difference between RPM and between target and actual RPM. Then the derivative is reacts to rate of change of RPM, so how fast it changes. So the gain, in, in a nutshell, your gain is how big of a change it's going to be able to make. So if you look at the proportional gain, that's how big of a change it's going to have the ability to make if your RPM is fluctuating a little bit. So if your target's at 800, or let's say, let's look at this chart right here. So this is, this is a tune that I'm currently working on. Uh, this is my brother, Gabe. Shout out to Gabe. He's got an awesome twin turbo Fox body. Uh, I haven't given you enough love on the channel, but uh, I really appreciate you trusting me with your car. I love your setup. It's a really cool, uh, it's a really cool setup. But anyways, we're working on Gabe's tune here. And what we're doing is making it so that the idle doesn't oscillate. So what will happen is if you said, hey, like here's my target RPM is 900 and it can dip to seven up to 11, you don't want that oscillation, right? You want it to maintain it really well. So what we're looking at on these settings, this is our closed loop idle settings, is the proportional gain and the integral gain. The proportional gain is how big of a change it's going to allow it to make if your RPM is pretty close to your target. Right, so if you set your target at 900, it's just a uh, arbitrary number. But if we go up here, uh, I've got Gabe set at 850 on his target RPM for when it's hot. So when it's above 140 degrees, then it tries to maintain 850. So let's say that our setting's 850, and we give that proportional gain a really big number. Right? Let's say that we say, hey, you can make 50% or 100%. You can go as far as you have to or as far as you want to. What that does is if your target RPM is at 850 and the actual is like at 800, it says, oh my gosh, we're not meeting it. And it makes a huge change. So then your RPM starts going up and down because your IAC valve is opening and closing, opening and closing, opening and closing. What you want <laughs> is to give it a very small, uh, a very small percentage. So on the uh, proportional gain, that's how big of a change it can make when it's fairly close to your target RPM, right? So what I like to do is set my proportional pretty small because when it's there, right, you don't want it making huge changes. So your proportional gain will be set up as, as fairly small number. I think out of the box when you enable it, it's like at 50%. Uh, and that's typically too high in my findings. So what I like to do is set it low, right? If you start low, see how that works? You can kind of creep your way up until you start getting a lot of oscillation. Then you can tell it's making too big of a change. The difference you need to understand between the proportional and the integral is where they come into play. 
right? So we already talked about proportional. That's when your RPM, your, your actual RPM is pretty close to your target. So I'll set that pretty small. And then the integral is how big of a change it's allowed to make when it's pretty far away. So let's say that your target's at 850 and it's at like 1200, right? That's pretty far away. So it's going to want to make a, a decent size change in order to get it where it wants to be. So you'll want your integral set. I usually start at double. So I'll go with a small number on my proportional gain. I'll say, hey, okay, I want that at two or five. And then my integral, I'll double that as a good rule of thumb and see where that gets me, right? Because that way, when when it's pretty close, it'll make a small change. And then when it's reasonably far away from your target, it'll be able to make a, a change that's twice as big. So that's where I like to start. That, that prevents it from getting a lot of oscillation. If you allow it to make smaller changes, um, it's not going to jump up and down as much. So, um, and then your derivative, um, your derivative I'll usually leave at zero. Uh, so that reacts to the rate of change of RPM. Five is what it was at. Uh, I left it there. I usually keep a, a pretty small number in there. Um, and then there's a couple of other settings here. So your closed loop idle PID activation settings. So this is when it actually allows the PID settings to take effect. Okay. So if, if we are saying, Hey, uh, I want you to take effect after X amount of time, um, this is where it's going to happen, right? So if you look at our closed loop idle PID activation settings, it says our activation TPS, right? So that's your throttle position has to be less than two, less than 2% throttle. Uh, and then your RPM, it says it can activate below that RPM. So this is, so below a thousand RPM is what we have that set at. And then it's got to be below 2% on the TPS and then the load. So the load is important because that's where it's at on your actual tune. So what I'm going to show you here is, we'll just pull up our fuel table. Your load, your load is this right here. So that's the fuel load in KPA. That's the minimum percentage that it has to be. So that means that it's not going to be operating when the engine's off, basically. Um, so it's got to be above that load for it to activate the closed loop idle. So up here is your, uh, your delay in behavior. Your PID delay is how long all of the conditions for entering PID settings or closed loop idle must be met before entering closed loop control. So this is at five seconds. That means that it'll start up and idle up. It's got an ASE taper. It'll do all that stuff before it actually starts uh, doing the PID control. Um, some of these other things, PID ramp to target time. This is uh, how long after entering the closed loop idle. So when it goes from like it's not using closed loop idle to where it is, this is how long it takes to, to get there. A couple of seconds is more than enough. Um, the control interval, this is important. So if you have it to where your PID uh, can make big changes to the position of your IAC valve, um, and it is making those changes very often, you'll get a lot of oscillation. So what I like to do is set this at a reasonable amount of time. And I believe, what's the maximum? I'll try to set it like at 2,000, see what it tells you. Okay, so it's got to be less than 500 milliseconds. So I usually set mine at 100 or 200. And a millisecond, if you don't know, is a fraction of a second. So there's a, there's a thousand milliseconds in a second. So this will be 0.2 of a second. And then the PID disable RPM. So this is, um, this cancels the closed loop idle when it exceeds this threshold. So there's our thousand RPM limit again. All right, so I'm gonna go through how I would actually start adjusting this if I wanted to. Um, I've kind of explained everything to you guys. Now I'm going to show you how I would adjust it. So we'll we'll start there. So if Gabe 
were to call me and say, hey, uh, I don't like the idol. Uh, I want to change that idol to, uh, let's say, we want to go to uh, 900 RPMs instead of 850. I'd go in here and I would open up my closed loop idle settings. I would also go in here and open up my target RPM. Now, if the if we see a lot of oscillation in it, then we can say, okay, well, it's going up and down a lot. Um, so we would adjust our proportional gains down a little bit. That way it can't make such huge changes. And then the other thing I would do is if we want our RPM target to be lower, we'd say, okay, here's here's where we want it lower, like our final RPM is when it's warm. So we'd say, okay, we take that down. Let's say we want to go to 800, right? We change that. The other thing you have to look at is fueling. So if our table, here we go. So we've got 500, 750, and 1,000. So that means that on our table, if our target RPM is 800, we're going to be right here all the time, and we shouldn't ever get to this 500 area. So there we go. That would mean that our fuel would be there. Now, if you're, you'll have to adjust your fuel a little bit after you adjust your target RPM because with less RPM, with less air coming into the engine, you'll need less fuel. So you might have to adjust these numbers a little bit. So what I usually do is I'll adjust my target RPM. I'll make sure that my PID settings are appropriate for what I'm trying to do. And then I'll do a log. We'll see how everything works out. We'll see how the uh, fuel is throughout that. And then I'll adjust my uh, target fuel here to make that uh, right where my target uh, air fuel is at idle. So I usually target between 14.3 and 14.9, uh, 14.8 ish. Um, I find with a little bit of extra fuel at, at the idle, it seems to run a little bit better. You don't want to run it too lean. Otherwise you'll end up with some weird idle conditions. So that's the basics. There's not a whole hell of a lot of, to it other than that. Uh, a lot of it is just getting familiar with your car. So if you guys have uh, questions, comments, Put them below. Ask me some questions. You can follow me on all of my social media. I always leave links to that in the description. Follow me on Instagram. I'm on TikTok. Um, I don't post a lot on Snapchat, but I'll try to get better at that. <laughs> Hope this is helpful, guys. Have a great day. See you guys on the next video.